Well, here we go. It is the off season, and usually around this time after the draft, it's kind of a quiet time uh, for the NFL, but it's Jets land. There is never anything quiet. And right now the Jets are in the process of trying to extend Quinn and Williams. He has played four years with the New York Jets. He is going into his fifth season, which is on the fifth year option. And usually this is the time when a contract extension takes place. And there's already been a few defensive tackles from that draft class that have gotten signed. Jeffrey Simmons, Dexter Lawrence, etc. Those guys have gotten paid already, but Quinnen Williams has not. So he has taken negotiations to social media as he has changed his Twitter bio to say defensive tackle for dot, 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 dot. Now, obviously, the New York Jets still hold his rights, right? He's under contract for the New York Jets. Uh, they could franchise tag him after this year if they wanted to. That is a very messy way to do this. I don't think it would be wise to have his fifth year option play out and then franchise tag him. Uh, Quinton Williams has been one of your better players. He took a massive step last year to where he is a legitimate star interior player double digit sacks, like just a really, really good guy who you drafted third overall. You're at that point now where it's time to start taking care of your homegrown talent. It's different than Sam Darnold or Jamal Adams uh, or Leonard Williams, three guys who the Jets drafted. And, you know, two out of the three were pretty good players, but the, every one of those circumstances made sense. Why they were not going to pay Leonard Williams after drafting Quinn and Williams just two years. No. Four years later, uh, that's just the timing didn't make sense on that one. And they were going into a rebuild. So uh, Douglas traded him, which, again, made a ton of sense. I think that's something logically that we all agreed on. The Sam Darnold trade with how things you know went down uh, was also kind of one that felt that it was you know necessary to do. They get good value for him uh, and he's you know bounced around the league. And now maybe we'll play for the 49ers to start off the year. We'll see. Uh, and Jamal Adams, obviously, you know what that turned into. Elijah Vera Tucker, Garrett Wilson is one of the highest paid safeties uh, in the league. And the Jets, you know, moved on from that. Again, the, all three, I think, were the right decisions at the time. You know, the quarterback didn't work out, but that's a conversation for another day. But supposedly, Quinn and Williams liked a tweet about him from about a month ago uh, where he was talking about or where Play Like a Jet was talking about a 23 to 25 million dollar a year range which makes sense. That is the window that you should be working with based on what some of these other guys this past off season got paid. If Quinn Williams is asking for $30 million a year, I don't think he is by the way, then obviously you're not going to just fork over the money and, and do it. But what I think is happening is that there's, there's a bridge. Joe Douglas is probably coming uh, in, in a little low. Quinn probably coming in a little high and they're trying to figure out the difference somewhere in the middle. And again, I am good with 23 to 25. In that range, that would put him as the second highest paid interior defender behind Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald's AAV is $31 million for this upcoming year. Quinnen is not getting that. And, you know, do I wish the negotiations for, or, you know, the leverage or whatever you want to call it, I hate that word after the Aaron Rodgers saga, but whatever you want to say, what, what Quinnen is, is doing, taking that to social media, I wish that wasn't the case, but in today's NFL, this, this is how it goes. This is how it happens, unfortunately. I do think something does get done, and I still believe, and I did a video on this a few weeks ago, it's not time to panic. It's mid-May. If you're getting to training camp in July and a deal is not done, then okay. We can have a reasonable conversation about, you know, someone has to budge here. What are we doing? But you got about another six weeks before you have to start worrying about it. Again, I'm not, this is not really a cause for concern for me personally. Uh, I do think something gets done four for a hundred is going to be my prediction. So the 25 million a year AAV uh, and no, I'm not trading Quinn and Williams. I don't think you turn around and trade him. I don't care if someone get, is giving you multiple first round picks, like in the Jamal Adams situation, the jets are in a window where first round picks doesn't help them. It's it doesn't matter because you're going for it this year, a future first round pick or Quinnen Williams, who's arguably a top three interior defensive lineman in the sport and the best piece on that defensive line. It's, it's Quinnen every single day of the week. It's, we're not, you're not at that point. You are going for it now. You can't be like one foot in, one foot out. Hey, we're going for it, but also we're not really because we're going to trade our best defensive player. That doesn't make any sense. And yes, Quinnen, uh, maybe Sauce, you can make the cases 
is better, but uh, you know what I mean. We're going to trade our best defensive lineman, our best pass rusher. No, it's silly season. You, you can't be doing that. But again, not time to panic yet, but I understand the frustration. I want to hear your thoughts on the scenario down below. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Matt. I'll catch you next time.